Hello students, welcome to EPG Patashala. I am Dr. Sabu Matthew George. Uh, I am associated with the Center for Women's Development Studies as an independent researcher. Um, today we are going to talk on the challenges in stopping sex selection. Earlier we have dealt with the patterns of declines in child sex ratio. So in the paper, the stories the states tell. The objective is to make the students understand the consequences of the declining child sex ratio and the challenges in involving in, involved in addressing it. So this is the regional spatial distribution of child sex ratios in our districts of India and uh, between the census of 2001 and 2011. So we are looking at effective actions which are required to stop sex selection. The major problem in dealing with this crime is that it happens quietly. It happens away from public gaze, unlike many other crimes of violence against women. So therefore, there is always a denial when, when we see sex ratios declining. For instance, in 1991, sex ratios had declined in, in some of the states, particularly Punjab and Haryana. But demographers were not willing to say that it was because of sex selection. For instance, in NFHS 1, 92-93 in Punjab had recognized that sex determination was becoming popular in Punjab. But despite that, it took another so many years till the late 90s when scholars like Hriday Rajan and Mari Bhatt started talking about declining sex ratios at birth, which was entirely because of the increase in practice of sex selection. That is because the sex is determined by medical methods in the fetal stage and the girl child, girl fetus is selectively eliminated before birth. So whether you look at Punjab in the 90s or Bengal and Kashmir in the 2000 or Kerala in the post-2010 period, there is a reluctance to believe that sex selection is happening in and therefore, if every district of the country has to improve sex ratios only after child sex ratios have dropped below 800 or low 800s, then India will, con will lose about 50 million girls over the coming decades. So with this, we have lost over 15 million in the past two, two and a half decades. So we are not you know, we, the country as a whole see, does not seem to be that cognizant of the genocide happening. We begin with the history of sex selection in India. Discrimination in the country against women has taken place for probably over a thousand years. But sex selection as a fact of violence against women was recognized much later. This, right from the first census in 1872, we found that there were less women in our country. But it was the Committee of, on Status of Women which first raised the alarm on declining sex ratio in 1975. It recognized sex ratio is an indicator of women's status. Because of public campaigns by women's organization and others in Bombay in the 80s, you have to write here, in mid 90s, the emergence of sex selection was brought to public notice because of the campaigns by women's organizations and others in Bombay in the mid 80s. But the country was in denial for a very long time. The first law was enacted in Maharashtra in 1988 against fetal sex determination. The national law came only in 1994, though the implementation was started only in 2001. At the national level, 
thanks to scholars like Ridharajan and Murray Butt. By late 90s, we have, the country accepted that there is masculinization of sex ratios at birth. When the census 2001 findings came in March 2001, where we saw uh, sex ratios in Punjab go down as, seven, as low as 798, when we saw districts as low as Fatehgarh Sahib as 750s, you know, this led to considerable interest among policymakers, scholars, donors, and activists, and even contributed towards global recognition of sex selection as a form of violence against women. So again, what I'm trying to emphasize is, it, though sex selection started in the 70s, it took 30 years before the country woke up in terms of seeing it as a problem against problem of violence against women. We are talking about the indicators for measuring deficit of women. Sex ratios reflect the status of women and girls in the society. The various sex ratios defined are the ratio is normally expressed as number of males per file, as generally there are more women than men in most countries. However, in India, right from the early census conducted during the colonial period, sex ratio was expressed as a number of females per thousand males in the population. Sex ratio at birth refers to the number of male births per hundred female births. The census has reported this is a biological constant between 105 to 106 boys per 100 girls. The census has reported that this sex ratio at birth is a biological constant between 105 to 106 boys per 100 girls. Since in India, sex ratios are defined as number of females per thousand males, in this publication, for consistency, all sex ratios at birth are converted to number of females per thousand males. Thus, a sex ratio at birth of 105 boys per 100 girls is equivalent to 952 girls per thousand boys. Again, I am emphasizing, in India, the sex ratio is defined as number of females per thousand males. Definition of child sex ratio in, in India refers to number of females per thousand males in the age group 0 to 6 years. This gives you a a, a look at what are the sex ratios around the country, around the world are, and looks at the time change of and time trend of these changes. So first of all, let's look at India between in the late 90s, 1999 to 2001, sex ratio was 894 girls per thousand boys, which means that more than 5%, nearly 6% of girls were eliminated before birth. China was 855, Singapore was 917, and South Korea was 877. So the other tables talk about the time trends of sex ratios at birth in Taiwan, in South Korea, and in China. So all these countries, that is China, Taiwan, Sex Ray, and uh, South Korea, had seen declines in the 80s and 90s. Fortunately for us, our declines largely were post 90s. One major reason why sex selection took root and has been spreading relentlessly since 1970 has been because the private medical sector has found sex selection as a huge business model. Thousands of crores are made by the private sector in the, un, in the illegal determination of sex and elimination of the fem, female fetus. The first private clinic started in Amritsar in 1979. And today, there are well over 50,000 registered clinics. So, over the last five decades, sex selection has been increasing. It didn't happen overnight. It did happen 
over a long time because the country itself woke up only by 2001 and even today some of the states are in the denial stage. So therefore it is important to look at that the consequences of these elimination of say 15 million girls over the last 25 years would last over several generations. When you look at the factors of sex selection, one of the original reasons for introducing sex selection was because of the global concern on exp population explosion. The western world was obsessed with the rapid growth of population in India and China in the 50s and 60s. So our first research on sex selection was initiated in All India Institute of Medical Sciences in 1970 with, with experts from Population Council in New York. The results were published in Indian Pediatrics in 1975 which concluded in India cultural and economic factors make the parents desire a son in it and in many instances the couple keeps on reproducing just to have a son. Prenatal determination of sex would put an end to this unnecessary fecundity. There is of course a tendency to abort the fetus if it is female. This may not be acceptable to persons in the West but in our patients this plan of action was followed in 7 of 8 patients who were the test primarily carried for the determination of the sex of the fetus. The parents elected for abortion without any undue anxiety. The other factor was the misuse of medical technology and promotion of sex selection by ultrasound manufacturers. Ultrasound emerged in India by early 1980s in a few cities and by 1990s became the most common method for fetal sex determination. In the 80s, both in China and South Korea, ultrasound companies led by GE exploited the determination for sons and created a huge market for ultrasound fetal sex determination. Sadly, GE Wipro continued the same trend in India since 1995 and by late 90s captured 70% of the market. Finally, Supreme Court had to intervene in 2002 to retrain restrain such reckless promotion of sex determination. We are very fortunate that the, uh, the new government under Prime Minister Modi uh, in 2015 started the Beti Bachao Beti Padao campaign. The objectives are to prevent gender biased sex selection, elimination of girls, to ensure survival and protection of the girl child after birth and ensure that the girls also receive education and participate in, in social world. We also need to look at the public perceptions and emerging realities against girl children. We are constantly told that, it is, that our Indian mindsets are anti-girl. We need to accept that these are not, our mindsets are not permanently cast in stone. The relentless promotion of sex selection over the last 40 years in India has today widely legitimized the illegal practice of sex selection. When most families have three to four children, most, some of them, would have two or some even three girls in a family. So even in the mid 90s, whether it's in Haryana or in South India, we came across families with multiple girls. But with rapid reductions in family sizes and with increased of practice of female feticide, when one looks at rural Alwar or rural western UP in the national capital region, families will with two or three girls are being mocked at. The perception that within communities there are some people who feel that these excess should that these excess girls should not be allowed to be born is frightening. Nirbhaya made a turning point in our country on violence against women. And it is in this context we need to look at Beti Bachao, Beti Padava Yojana. Following large-scale 
protests against Nirbhaya's reign. The government of India appointed the Justice Verma Commission and later changed the criminal law so that prosecution could be more effectively done against the violate, those who indulge in violence against women. And in 1995, since the government of India re recognized that coordinated convergent efforts are needed to ensure survival, protection and empowerment of the girl child, the Modi government announced Beti Bachao, Beti Padao initiative. It started in 100 districts, the, which is a joint initiative of Ministry of Women and Child Development, Ministry of Health and Ministry of HRD. PNDT Act is a very stringent act. Any breach of any provision can lead the, can cause the service provider up to three years imprisonment or a fine of up to 10,000 rupees for the first offence. For subsequent offence, it can be up to five years of imprisonment and a fine of 50,000. Uh, the major threat to the medical professionals also come from their qualification and suspension from the medical council so that their, their practice can be stopped for a short time or for a longer period if there is persistence of commission of these crimes. It is not only the medical professions, but the persons who are involved in promoting these, that is family members or brokers, they are also covered by this law and can be imprisoned for up to three years or a fine of up to 50,000 for the first offence and, and more stringent punishments for subsequent offences. The only individual who is protected is the pregnant woman herself who is presumed to be compelled by the husband or the relatives to do determined sex. There are very severe penalties under this act, you know, for the violations re related to advertisement of sex selection could mean imprisonment for a period of, of up to th three years or a fine of 10,000 and for the first offence and up to five years or a fine of one lakh for the subsequent offences. The impact of implementation of law has taken some years to be seen because implementation started later and Maharashtra was the first state to, to take implementation. Haryana also started but it again woke up in 2015. The first conviction came in 2006 after the efforts in, in 2001 and 2 in Faridabad and Gurgaon. In Maharashtra, the initial efforts were started in 2004 by advocate Varsha Deshpande. Her organization involved, filed hundreds of cases against violators all around the state and she used decoys for sting operations. And as convictions happened, slowly deterrence against the illegal practice of sex selection started. Between 2009 to 2014, the state made a lot of special efforts to implement the act. One of the remarkable things which has happened since the census of 2001, public discourse in the country on sex selection, in the media, in otherwise in the society, has increased. So therefore, that's a very positive thing. We are very grateful to the, the Census of India for the, uh, and to the government and to the public figures for talking about these, this crime against humanity. Even political parties, whether it is a BJP or the Congress or the CPM or AAP, all these parties have made various commitments in recent elections against the the crime of sex determination, sex selective abortion. We need to appreciate that the advertisements promoting sex selection have virtually appeared, disappeared from the print media 
and the electronic media by 2002 thanks to the intervention of the Supreme Court and the courts, lower courts in proceeding against these violations. Uh, and more recently in 2014, the Supreme Court directed internet companies like Google to stop advertisements on sex selection in internet. Thus, we have seen uh, some significant measures which, deter, which are likely to deter the spread of sex selection in the coming decades. Now, there are claims that sex ratios at births are improving. Now, if you look at the SRS, between from 892 to 909, the ratios have improved over the period 2004 to 2013. However, the major concerns are that there is continued stagnancy in UP. Over 2006 to 2013, it has remained largely at 870s. In, for Bihar, 2006 to 13, it has been around 90. These two crucial states are important because one in three girls is born in here. In expansion of ultrasound clinics and declines family sizes are other relevant factors which have a potential bearing on the child, on the potential rate of change in child sex ratios. Since both these states ahead are sharply declining in fertility, it's imperative to prevent further intensification of son preference by implementing PNTT. Also, the penetration of ultrasound clinics in these states are relatively less compared to most of Western India or Northwestern India. So, there is still a huge potential for increasing utilization of fetal sexing. Therefore, in the context of relatively poor implementation of the law, based on our field visit to these states, any significant improvement in child sex ratio in this part of, of the major part of Gangetic Plains seems very unlikely. In Beti Bachao, Beti Pradao's, Beti Padao scheme, there is expression of intent to implement the law, PCP and DT. However, most states ignore this effective strategy of, prevent, of to preventing the decline of child sex ratio. Prime Minister Modi's involvement with Beti Bachao, Beti Prao and speaking out against medical crime of sex selection is an encouraging sign towards improving sex ratio at birth. Finally, without implementation of law to create deterrence to provide to, pro, to the providers of sex selection, it will be difficult for India to achieve significantly improved levels in the coming decade. We are speaking about the challenge of stopping this practice of sex selection, which is a crime of, against uh, women. Fortunately, in recent uh, post-census 2001, we have seen increased discourse and recognition of the, of the practice in most parts of India. And some of the states have started being proactive in stopping sex selection and female feticide by implementing PNDT Act. We have also seen various consequences of these increasing practice. We have seen that it's not only really declining ratios, we are seeing that the violence against surviving women and girls have increased because of the shortage of women in the most affected areas. We are seeing that women are purchased for marriage. So trafficking for marriage has become a very significant contribution in some parts of India, like Northwest India, like Western India, where women are brought, bought from other Eastern India and even as far as Kerala to meet the requirements for marriage. In some parts of Northwest India, like parts of Punjab, parts of Haryana, in Western UP, we are seeing several men in the family, 
for instance, two or three brothers sharing a single woman. So, these consequences are, in, are very frightening. We also seeing in, in so many districts of the national capital region over the last 10-15 years, hundreds of young men and older men, even as old as 40 years, were unable to get married because of the shortage of women. So, th these intergenerational consequences will only worsen if sex selection continues. As of now, we have some hope that some states like Maharashtra, Haryana and possibly Rajasthan will improve in sex ratios at birth and we hope in the next two years, more states will join. Particularly, we are concerned about UP and Bihar because one in three girls is born in this area. If UP and Bihar does a turn around, then we overall the country will show start showing very significant improvements in sex ratios and birth.